Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Can you lift his feet, sailor? I'm trying, but... Mr. Johnson's left foot is heavier than his right. Throws me off balance. Oh, come on, let's get him into my bed. You know, you can help too, Mrs. Johnson. I was afraid you were going to ask me that. Imagine a husband of mine fainting in the lobby of a hotel. John Johnson, Jr. Jr.? Fifty years old and doesn't know how to behave in a hotel lobby. You do it, I can't touch him. Gorges himself with food and faints. Set. Fatty is... I can't even tell whether the shin bone's connected to the ankle bone. Oh, the ankle bone's connected to the... Stop uh, beating your gums, comedian. Just open the door to my room. I'll do it. See? My help. <laughs> you're, a, you're a clever one, Mrs. Johnson. Okay, Junior. Up. There. Sleep tight. Come on, let's leave him alone. I'll send him home to you in the morning, Mr. Johnson. I can hardly wait. Send my husband home. We're staying at the Pacifica Hotel. I'll wait for him breathlessly. Now, there's a woman a man can admire, sailor. Marries a man, obviously a wealthy man, then she can't stand the sight of him. Shows she has a mind of her own. That's good in a woman. That's what makes me admire women so much. Take you now. Oh, you're just saying that because I put my hair up last night. You're such a... A man brought this letter, Mr. Slate. Said to give it to you right away. Oh, thanks, King. Is the man waiting for an answer? No. Gave me the letter and scurried into the wild blue yonder. Hmm. I read this, sailor. Goodbye, Shannon. Goodbye, dead man. Who gave you this, King? A man I never saw before, Lady Sailor. He gave me the... The letter and scurried into the wild blue yonder. Ah, oh, forget it. It's a new way of collecting bills. Hook me up a hammock on the patio, King. I'm going to sleep. Senor Morel, without a coat in this high place, you will become sick. The ocean winds eat through your bone. Worry about me, Pedro? You are a man, senor, whose brain molders with his sorrow. And for this, a man must crawl before you. And other men die. Two so far. I've killed only two. You delivered the message? Si. To Shannon? To his servant. Good, that's polite. An invitation to death should be polite. If you have no more need of me... No, stay here. I want you to look out at the sea with me. How lovely it is, how calm. And my wife sleeps in it. There where the moon touches a white crest. How long ago, Pedro? You tell me, how long? Six years. Six years since your wife drowned. You always come the days for me to six years. Six years since you and Shannon, the other two, murdered her. Threw her from the life raft so you filth could live. She was washed over by a wave. How many times must I tell you, madman? The fishing boat was wrecked in a storm. We got into the life raft. We five, a wave washed her over. We tried to You sa- think she sleeps in peace, Pedro? I hope so. I've killed two for her. And now there's Shannon. And then there'll be you.
Come on, Slate, wake up. Oh, yeah. I know she is, Slate. But tell her to go away. Wake up. Oh, dear. That's what you get for sleeping out here in a hammock. It's almost 8 o'clock and the rooster's on the wing. Are you going to wake up? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, well, what's the matter with you? Going out of your mind? What'd you dump me out of the hammock for? What? Hey, what was that? Get off your back, Slate. Something's happening in the hotel. Mr. Slate, in your room, quickly. Slate. Look at him. Yeah. Dead. Shot three times. What happened, King? I was fixing breakfast, Mr. Slate. Heard the shots, ran into your room, and saw Mr. Johnson like you see him. Uh, Call the police, sailor, and wait around for them. What about you? I'm going to wake up a lady. Maybe she can tell me why she's a widow. Good morning, Mr. Shannon. I see you didn't bring my husband with you. Thanks. Come on in. All right. Your husband couldn't come with me, Mrs. Johnson. I'm having orange juice. Uh, Would you like me to squeeze you an orange? Your husband's dead. Junior? Oh. Doesn't throw you, huh? Why should it? Oh, I don't know. Crazy custom, I guess. Woman's husband dies... uh... I had the notion women cry about things like that. (laughs) Dumb me. Cry for that pig? (laughs) He chomped his way into his grave. I warned him. He was shot to death. Shot three times. Well, that's picturesque. Yeah, real romantic. Is this all it does to you, Mrs. Johnson? The missus part is only an affectation now. If we're going to talk anymore, just uh, call me Rita. All the boys will from now on. Just one more thing. Why should anyone want to kill your husband? Well, I know why. You want to tell me or the police? Mm -hmm. You're prettier. My husband was killed to make me happy. I'm young, attractive, and... Don't, uh, Don't you think I'm attractive? Let's just say you're tall. About your size. And now you're going to be rich. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Gorgeously rich. Does that interest you? No? Get out of here, Mr. Shannon. Anything else I can do for you, LaSalle? Let me check my list. Uh, We have removed the body of Senor John Johnson, Jr. Check. We have photographed fingerprints. Check. We have etc. Check, etc. Check. Ah! This I have not done. Hmm, Lucky for you, I brought it up, huh? What haven't you done? To inform you, to inform Senor Shannon that the instant he puts a foot in his hotel here is to take his foot and bring it up to my office, to the police. I'll tell him. You want the rest of him, too, besides his foot? But the very instant. It is a matter of... I'll tell him, I'll tell him. Do not disappoint me, or your Shannon, senorita. Adios. Your pardon for my bumping into your walking body, senor. Pardon. Uh, That one would only throw me his business one day. He would make a name for me. Uh, uh, Give me the back of your hand, senorita. I will kiss it for you. All right. Deliciosa. Tasty, huh? Oh, delicious, delicious. Mm. You should come in cans. Senorita, you have just had the honor of being kissed by Timbro, the undertaker. Give me back my hand. Yeah, take it. This is not what I come for. Uh, Please to show me the dead body of Slate Shannon, eh? And I will take it away and do my utmost to give calm, satisfactory, reasonable service. If you like, we can arrange a layaway plan, small down payment, anything that you would... Oh, there's the body walking in now. Go Uh, collect him. That is Slate Shannon? But he looks like a man who has not yet kicked the bucket. I can't... I've been deceived. This is impossible. What's the little man crying for, sailor? You say something to hurt his feelings? I just proved to him you weren't dead. Broke his heart. Hold out your hand so he can kiss it. Maybe that'll make him feel better. 
Hey, what goes on with you when I'm out, sailor? Who is this guy? Timbro, the undertaker. You should hear his offer. Give him the pitch, tiny Tim. But, senor, you are not dead. I have been made of a fool. Somebody called me on the phone. Promise me that you are dead. Promise to give me your business. They promise me. <laughs> and I need the money so badly. I'm sorry I can't help you, tiny Tim. Over there is out. You cannot order me. The man said that you are dead. You go break his heart, too, Tim. Put me down, senor. Put me down. Put... Teach, you are really alive, huh? Bye, tiny Tim. <laughs> We'll report this to the association. I will report... Don't bother to take off your coat, Slate. You've got a date. Guy tells me I'm dead and you want to go dancing. Not me. The Sal. They tell me he's got a bunny hug that'll open your eyes. Let's go try it on, huh, Slate? You, senorita, make yourself lovely in my wicker chair. It is my only piece of furniture that becomes you. Ever caught me on a desk? It'd make a peachy police calendar. In the wicker chair, so that when the fright overtakes you, you can bury your head in its arms. Fright? What are you talking about, LaSalle? Just that. And you, senor, you will take it standing up, I presume. Because you imagine yourself an invulnerable man. No, he doesn't. Show him your collection of scars, Slate. Soon there may be the permanent scar on him, senorita Duval. The scar of death. Thanks for putting the wicker chair under me. This your day to play Goblin in the cell? What are you talking about? Two weeks ago, a man was murdered. A plain man, Juan Rico. A week later, another man was murdered. So you had a couple of good weeks. What's that got to do with Slate? I will come to it. Four men have been promised death. Two have got it. That murder note someone sent me, it was for real. That's what you're trying to say? Precisely. The killer of Johnson Jr. thought it was you sleeping in your own bed. He thought he killed you. Slate, that makes you... Precisely. Two are dead, and there is still a third and a fourth. Walk quietly, Nirvana, Senor Shannon. The third death waits for you. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. In Shannon's place, a man lay him down in a bed not his own, on face a frown. His indigestion to sleep away, but he wake with little bullets that come to stay. He die in Mr. Shannon's now angered bed, make scarlet the pillow with his blood so red. Then police they say, eat big mistake, not him but Mr. Shannon is who death should take. Three cheers and a rackety racks for the Havana Police Department. Turn a back somersault and lead me in a cheer, sailor. What makes you so sour, Slate? They're trying to save your life. Yeah, but how? They want me to get out of Havana. Maybe I never told you this, sailor. I'm crazy about Havana. It's only for a little while till they find the murderer. Someone wants you dead and you want to walk up to him and shake his hand. Because in some rotten port once, maybe a girl whispered you were a hero. Correction. In all the rotten ports. I'm not going to run. It has always been so with him, Lady Sailor. I remember once in Vina del Mar, uh, suddenly I remember another thing that I have not remembered. This letter came for you, Mr. Slate, while you were at the police. Well, let's see. Hmm. Just like the other one you handed me, King, the first one, the one that said... You've been asking for it. Open it. Uh, look what it says, Sailor. You were once fortunate, Shannon. You will never be again. You going to sit here and wait for it, Slate? You think I'm nuts? I'm going to share it with LaSalle. That's what he's getting paid for, to keep me alive. Now, if you go with me, Sailor, you might get hurt. 
Ain't it always like that, Buster? Let's go. Yes? Are you Mrs. Johnson? Was? Why? Would you mind if I came in? Of course you can come in. I want to look at you. I'll stand in front of these dressing mirrors and you can look at me four ways. Like me? What manner of woman are you? Hmm? I don't know. What don't you like about me, Mr. Uh, uh... Morell. Charles Morell. What do you want, Charlie? I thought to look at you. I thought to see how a woman grieves. And finally, to give you my condolences. Oh, you mean about Fatso getting killed? My husband? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, you dear boy. You're not sorry he's dead? The fact that a man pumped three bullets into him leaves you like this? Dear, dear boy. Fatso had three bullets in him, huh? Yes. That's right, he did. But the papers didn't say so, dear boy. What? You killed Junior? Mrs. Johnson... That's one way you'd know he was shot three times. You kill him? It was a mistake. I thought he was someone else. I thought he was... Slate Shannon. I don't like that fellow either. You miss Slate Shannon, Charlie. That's a shame. My wife was drowned six years ago. For the first time, I'm looking at another woman. Looking. I've almost stopped grieving. But not quite. Because there's still Shannon? Hmm? Then go away. Come back when your mind's all clear. I'll wait for you. <laughs> I cannot do what you ask of me, Shannon I will not reveal to you the fourth man on the death list And you know who he is See, si, we know who he is If you tell me who he is, where he is Maybe we can save each other's life Maybe he can tell me why someone wants him and me dead Maybe he can explain about the notes Why I have to die with guys I never saw before Never knew That's my slate Got A in elocution Deservedly Shannon, we do not know where this fourth man is. If we told you his name, you with your friendships in Havana might find him. And because you found him, lead the killer to him. Obviously, the killer knows where you are. For the other man, there is still a chance. And for Slate, a paper lily, huh? Oh, we will do our best. Hey. <laughs> Pedro Avarillo. You said something. It sounded like... Pedro Avarillo. A pitiful little thief who is hidden away from us by his friends in the barrio because they think we wish to arrest him for snatching purses when all we want is that he should live out his life in comfort for many years in our jails. The barrio shrugs, laughs, spits, and tells us nothing. That's funny. Me, they chew my ears off. Come on, sailor. Uh, thanks, LaSalle. Maybe I can bring us back alive. Say, mi Elma. Oh, my soul, mi hermosa, my beautiful. Try to put your arms around Fat Maria, huh? <laughs> you won't make it. But he will give me a few shivers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't change, Maria. Uh, you come for a night of dance? All polkas are on the house for you. Say. You haven't had a polka since that Romanian put you on a diet. Now we want Pedro Avrello. You know where he is? The police want him, too. Maybe I don't give him to you, because suddenly you are the color of police. It's true what the police say, Maria. Someone's trying to kill Pedro. Slate, too. Maybe Slate can change that. Uh, from your lips, I believe it. The Las Cantinas Hotel is the dirtiest with the most rats. With the most... Yeah, with Pedro. Let's go open up a new world for him, sailor. <laughs> Pedro. I guess he's not here, sailor. He's here. 
Huh? Sailor looking through keyholes. That's not cricket, girl. Here, let me look. In that chair by the window. See? Paper in his lap. Like he fell asleep. Yeah. Pedro! Watch out, sailor. Wake up, Pedro. Wake up. Slate, look. In his back. Yeah. Knife to death. Hey, wait a minute. Let's get out of here. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, what? I know this guy. Six years ago, I saw this man on a life raft. A life raft? Uh-huh. It was an all-day deep-sea fishing excursion. I was new to Havana. So I went with the tourists. The boat was loaded, about 20 too many people on it when the storm came up. The boat sank. Him, me, and a couple of other men wound up in a small rubber life raft. A woman. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It is? What is? The woman. She drowned. She got tossed overboard by a wave. We tried to save her, but in that rough sea... What's all this got to do with those killings? That woman. I met her husband at the inquiry. He started to beat on my chest, threatened me, said the four of us drowned her. I couldn't blame him at the time. And maybe the time is now. Revenge. Is that what you mean? Let's walk around Havana, sailor. Maybe we can find out. Can't we go home now, Slate? We've been walking Havana for five hours. Hey, come on, turn this corner. Now, look over your shoulder. See a man in a straw hat and a cane? No. Wait a minute. Yes, he just came around the same corner we did. Come on. Was he the man who's looking for us, Slate? That drowned woman's husband? I don't know. I wouldn't know if I saw him up close. But you saw him at the inquiry. Well, for about ten seconds, his face was twisted with grief. It's been six years ago. Here, in this building, sailor. What's in here? An elevator that goes five stories up to a roof. If the guy in the straw hat isn't our boy, we'll get a fine view of Havana Harbor. Someone's got the elevator up on the second floor. Ring the bell and bring it down. Just as long as you let me ring your elevator bells, I'm happy. Wait! Wait for me! I almost got away from you, mister. Thank you, thank you. The floor, please. I don't want to inconvenience you two. You were on this elevator first. Take it wherever you're going. Well, we were going to the top, to the roof. Why, so was I. It's a fine time to look at the boats. All lighted up, and the fishermen making port. Yes, it's quite a sight for them that likes it. Third floor, tots clothing, beanies, six-shooters. Well, pardon me, mister, it's the altitude. Charming, charming. Well, here we are. Watch your step, please. I know I know you, mister. Indeed you do. Very well. You knew my wife, too. A woman who drowned? Out there. Out there in the ocean. Uh, I couldn't be helped. You all try to tell me that? The whimperings of dying men. Pedro Avrillo didn't have a chance to whimper. He was stabbed in the back. And you, whimper. Whimper, plead for your life, Shannon. You're the last one. Slate, watch him. He's got a knife. Come and get me, mister. You whimper. You whimper. Did you hear anything yet, mister? You last one. Watch that blade, sonny. Watch it. Watch it. Hurts, huh? This won't hurt a bit. Stop it, Slate. You'll kill him. Slate. What did you want to do? Beat him to death? Uh. That's insurance, baby. That way I stay alive. Get me out of here. What's the matter? Don't you like the harbor? Just get me out of here. Go home. I'll see this guy meets the cops. Go home. I'll meet you back at Shannon's place.
straight. What? I just want to tell you how much I like it. No wonder. You look good aboard the Bold Venture. I like it, too. Where are you taking me? Well, I'm not taking you anywhere. I'm running across the channel for repairs. The carburetor's coughing. So give it cough medicine. You can fix a carburetor. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to take a boat ride. Come here, Slate. Close your eyes. That's right. That's why you wanted to take a boat ride, isn't it? Ah, uh, you found me out. That makes me a cad. Come here. Be careful, Slate. You're rocking the boat. You crazy? I never rock boats. So a little publicity is going to hurt you? Do it again, Slate. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. <laughs> <laughs>